In this video, we're going to talk about angles, both the notation and um, how to measure them. So we can describe the measurements with certain vocabulary. We can also find measurements with certain vocabulary. And then we'll also look at using a protractor and how to um, actually measure the angles. Um, with that, if you don't have a protractor, that is absolutely okay at no point Am I going to have you measure anything with a protractor? But just in case um, down the line you come across one and need to measure an angle, you'll know how to do it. Um, so first off, let's get a definition for angles. Now, it's a combination of three points. So let's say I have these points A, B, and C here. A, B, and C. Now, there's going to be two points here, and then one point's going to have the specific name of vertex, which will kind of be the middle point of our angle. So let's say we call B the vertex. What that would mean is that that's going to be kind of the starting point. So what I'd imagine is that I'd start a line at B, and it would go through, let's say, point A, and another line would also start at point B and go through line C. So when we do that, when we focus at the vertex, which makes this point of the angle, it's going to be the measurement between those two lines. So this measurement right here would be an angle measurement. So for a definition, what we'll say is for angles, it's a measurement between two points and a vertex. Now, for notation, there's a few different ways that we could write this um, angle measurement. So if I'm trying to describe this uh, color blue here, this blue measurement here, um, the symbol we'd use looks like this. That would be read out loud as angle. And then we can do it as a combination of three letters. And the order doesn't really matter, but what is important is that B would be in the middle. So I could describe it as angle A, B, C. And by describing it that way, it gives me the order to follow. So it's angle, and we're starting at A, going to B, and then ending at C. So with that, I could see how that measurement comes through. Um, we could also describe this as angle CBA, and it would give us that same measurement. Starting at C, going to B, and then going from B to A would get us that same point. But just notice if I changed things, so as a little side note here, if I had those three points, A, B, and C, and I wanted to talk about, say, angle measurement C, A, B, what that would mean is I would have to go C to A, and A would end up being my vertex. So I go C to A and then A to B. So with that, the angle that would be described there would actually be this angle being formed at A. So it wouldn't connect at all to this um, previous picture that we just drew. It would be doing something completely different. So the order of the letters is important. More specifically, that middle letter has to be the vertex. Another thing we can do is just call it angle B because that's really where the angle is occurring. So just saying the angle and then whatever the vertex is, since those other letters, the order isn't mattering so much, we can just rely on that vertex. So with that, let's talk about actually getting a numerical measurement for our angles. And to do that, we often use a protractor for measurement. It's kind of our ruler for angles. Now, when you have a protractor, what you want to do is line up the vertex right here in the middle of it. So you'd put the vertex right there, and then it just kind of depends. Maybe your line segment's going off to the right, or it could be going off to the left. Either way, this um, protractor's gonna do this same measurements. So let's say it's similar to the picture we did up above there, and it's going off to the right here. What you could see is that there's two numbers being listed here. There's zero and 180. In our case, this is our starting point. So where we're starting is at zero degrees. So we're at zero degrees here. And then we wanna draw our second line and where it's landing. And what happens is, say I have my second line here, I'm gonna do a little um, activity. It starts at zero degrees. And then as I move up, 
it's gaining angle measurement. So say I'm right here, this kind of middle point, and it's between 0 and 10, so right there would be 5 degrees. And then if I went, this would be 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, so on and so forth. And you could even get more exact, like so let's say I landed right here, that would be 0 to 50, and then it has one little extra increment. So that measurement right there would be 51 degrees for this angle measurement here. Um, if we kept going with it, let's say I kept going up here. This is a special angle that we'll talk about where we land right at 90 degrees. Oops. That's going to give us something that's called a right angle. So I had a little glitch there. Um, so 90 degrees, it's this middle point for when you can see where a protractor begins and then ends. And so this middle point would be 90 degrees. And then when we get to over here, let's say I landed here where it looks like it's saying 50. But as we saw before, 51 was over there. This is where we're getting a larger angle out. We've gone past 90 degrees. And that's where we use the larger numbers. It's like we've already gone to 90 degrees and then we're adding on above that. So this measurement here would be 130 degrees. And then it would continue on until we end up at a flat line here. And that measurement there is 180 degrees to go all the way around the protractor. So our protractor begins at, ends, uh, begins at zero, ends at 180. The idea is if you have a protractor, they're generally clear when you get them, and you can lay them down on your paper, or you just have to find the vertex, and then you can measure out that angle. So let's see how this works out. If we knew the angle measurement that we wanted to use, and I have some clear protractors on top of the paper here, but what we can see is our vertex here, and then we have our starting line mapped out for us for each of these scenarios. So that's starting at zero, and this is how I would line up my protractor. I'd get that little um, kind of cross there right over the vertex. And then what I would do is think about, I'm starting here at zero. I got 10, 20, 30, and then I want 35 degrees. So then I just go five more. And that means this angle right here is 35 degrees, which is exactly what we want there. Um, for 90 degrees, Similar setup there. So we have our start at zero and then measure around until we hit 90, which would be like that. Now, you'll notice some notation I've been using here um, when we show measurements, like in this first one. I kind of drew this little arch here, and then you could label the number next to it. Um, we can do that with any angle measurements. With 90 degrees, we do something special. Um, it's kind of a special angle that's going to come up a lot, especially when we talk about triangles. We want a short way of showing that it's 90 degrees. So what you'll see with 90 degree angles is just like a little box. It's part of a square there. And then they usually don't write the number next to it, just seeing that symbol there. So if you see this for an angle, that automatically means... 90 degrees. So if I was drawing a picture, I would just draw like that, and I wouldn't write 90 degrees out because it's implied by the symbol. All right, 120 degrees down here. So here we are at zero, and then I'm going to grab my line. So if I'm going off to the right here, there's zero, 10, 20, 90, and then to get 120, we need to go on to the other side of our protractor there. So for this one, this angle measurement here, is 120 degrees. And then 180 degrees is a special one where it's going to look like just a flat line. You do have this vertex kind of separating the line up, but so we start at zero and then we'd be counting all the way around till we get to 180 on that other side. So this angle right here seems kind of can sometimes feel uncomfortable to draw that one because it just looks like a straight line, but it is a measurement of 180 degrees. So that's for if we know the angle measurement and wanted to measure it out, that's how they'll show up. Now we're seeing some special angles here and each of these could be described a different way. Um, this first one, the 35 degree angle, a term we would use for that is acute. 
And what you might be seeing with this protractor is there's kind of this cutting point, especially the 90 degrees is kind of the cutting point of having these smaller angles versus larger angles. So when we have these smaller angles, we call them acute. So on this next page, I'm just going to write a definition for you over here. It's that an acute angle is an angle less than 90 degrees. So if I asked, asked you to draw an acute angle, you'd need some sort of starting line and a vertex. And then from there, if I wanted an acute angle, so you can imagine, okay, if here's 90 degrees, then it can just be any spot below that. Anywhere in there would make an acute angle. Let's say it looks something like this. That is a great acute angle there. All right, our next one's a right angle, and that's what we use for 90 degree angles. Say it's a right angle, and when we get to triangles, we'll talk about right triangles. It's having that angle measurement of exactly 90 degrees. So, an angle exactly 90 degrees. So with that, we just need a straight line to start with and a vertex. And then if we had our protractor, we just want to measure to that 90 degrees. I'll draw this as best I can. But then to if your drawing, if your drawing isn't quite great like mine, uh, if you just throw in that symbol, then we know it's exactly 90 degrees. All right. And then this 120 degree one, this would be an obtuse angle. So that's an angle that is more than 90 degrees. So if I had to draw an obtuse angle, I'd get my vertex, get my first kind of starting line going, and I could imagine, okay, there's 90 degrees. Anything to the left in this case would make an obtuse angle. So then we'd have that large angle there. And then our last one is this special case of 180 degrees, which is a straight angle since it makes a straight line. So with that, it would be an angle exactly 180 degrees. So with that, we would just need to get our vertex, get our starting line, and then really to draw the next line, it should just be a continuation of that line that you started with, and that would be 180 degrees. Um, so there's some definitions of types of angles that we could see.